us to be here this morning. Let's turn to page 317 and let's all stand. It's a little light subject. <laughs>
like and love him. The more you're going to like and love him. It says, he promised when his soul ascended, I'm coming back. The Lord did say. That's true. He's coming back, friends. There's scoffers from the beginning of time who never believed him. That doesn't mean it's not true. It's going to happen. If you look around, you can't help but see and know. Uh, even those who aren't uh, schooled in the Bible law can't help but see and know. The appearances are he's closer than he's ever been. Now, that just, I mean, that's common sense on the one hand because as another day passes, we're another day closer. But friends, I'm telling you, if you look out there and see what's happening, I uh, would not be surprised if he were to come forth before the service is over. Mm -hmm. And that's why, as friends, it's so important to be sure that you're ready to go. To be sure that when he comes, your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's why, uh, one of the reasons why church is so important because you get led to the uh, places in the scripture where Jesus lays out the plan of salvation and where uh, people can share God's word with you, help you see, you know, uh, uh, your need for him, where the Holy Spirit can speak to your heart. You say there's a, uh, I remember this well, you say there's a conspiracy against me. There was against me too. <laughs> Preacher was after me, Holy Spirit was after me, seemed like the singers were after me. Everybody's down my, down my throat, down my case. And I thought at the time you'd feel kind of upset, like, how dare they? How could they? I know how they could now, Miss Marcy. It's out of love. It's just out of love. If someone doesn't want to see you make a bad mistake, go to a bad place, spend eternity in hell, someone wants you to do what's the best thing you'll possibly do for yourself, what's the motivation? Love. Pure love. Pure love. So we thank God for that. Thank you for coming this morning. So good to see all of you. Uh, some of you, it's your first time in a while. Uh, some of you, it's first time at least since I've seen you. We're glad to have you here. And we just come together to worship the truth and the spirit. we got maybe an hour, hour and 15 minutes. These services have been running not too much to ask of ourselves to give God that, that time, our undivided attention during that time so we can worship Him. And thank you for coming this morning. Want to uh, thank the Lord. He saw Miss Kim through her surgery. She's got some follow-up to do, so we want to pray for her. But thank the Lord that she's going to be back with us after having surgery so soon. And I uh, want to ask you to continue to pray for her. You got the, uh, one call about this is uh, Silas's nephew, or be Betty Long's Oldest daughter, Michelle's father-in-law, passed away. They unplugged the, the machine, and he passed away. He was 63, and uh, the family's going to need our prayer. So let's remember that family in prayer and remember that need. Um, continue to pray for David Hines. He's battling a very tough battle with cancer. Let's pray for him. Uh, Miss Marcy's niece down in Kentucky, Marcy's daughter, her father-in-law has been diagnosed. He's a, a pastor down there. He's been diagnosed with um, pancreatic cancer. Is that right? That's right. So let's please pray for him. His name is Mark. He needs our prayer. And let's pray for the service we're gathered in today, friends. We, what a great privilege and honor it is. I mean a privilege and honor to be able to be in God's house. And let's pray God to bless the singers, bless the preacher, Brother Mike, and bless the service that we would just grow closer to him, have a greater desire and yearning and burning in our hearts to see lost souls saved and work for him. Someone else with a prayer request you'd like to share this morning, Ms. Moana? My uh, my granddaughter Gracie's first cousin, Hayden, a um, young man, he's 19 or 20, I'm not sure, but his girlfriend broke up with him and he tried to commit suicide. He overdosed on, I don't know what he overdosed on, but they was going to take him off. They didn't see any brain activity, but one doctor, for some reason, I don't know why, he's He's cooling the body down and then he's going to warm it back up to see what kind of, if they can find any, he's trying his best to find some brain activity. Mm -hmm. Please pray for him. That family's been hit so bad. Um, What's his name? What's his name? Hayden. Hayden. Uh -huh. Somebody else? That would go remember me and my family. Go ahead, Ms. Dorothy. Pray for my uh, nephew, Kyra. On the, yesterday he has stage four throat cancer, and my sister Isabel is having medical problems. Pray for them. Both of them are not safe, so pray for their souls. We will. Uh, go ahead, Miss Michelle. Can you pray for all the teachers that um, are preparing to yes. either do virtual or face to face? Um, they have a lot of anxiety about going back to school. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. Just keep them in your prayers because they need that. Sure, sure will. Go ahead, Miss Jackie. Um, Myrtle went back to emergency last night, and they are not giving her any reason. She's 
she's losing her oxygen for some reason, and then she can't breathe, and she just goes there, and then they send her back home. She needs a lot of prayer. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Don, too. He's sure. taking care of her. <laughs> Somebody else? Ms. Kim? Yeah, well, a friend of mine that lived in Tennessee, um, her husband's brother, her brother-in-law, he's in the hospital, and they thought he had COVID, but he tested negative, but he's unconscious, he's on a ventilator, no response. And his wife just got home from the hospital with breast cancer. So they're saying, she has really young children, very young people, and um, she has to have our church pray for them, so and then we have friends before it's like snuff, you got saved, and you've been baptized today. Wonderful. Well, you've got to be thankful. <laughs> we will pray, Ms. Kim. Anybody else? If not, then let's do pray for the service this morning. All those with an unspoken request, you can share that by raising your hand. God bless you. I want to ask uh, Brother David Thing if you can leave us in our, in our morning prayer. We can pray in our seats just like we would in the altar, friends, but let's just take this time to go before the Lord in prayer. I'll pray for the name of Jesus. Father, help us thank the Lord for his great privilege. Oh, yes, Lord, thank, thank you for your blessings, blessings of love. Thank you for the name of Jesus. Lord, we're, thank you, Lord, for that. Lord, we're, as my brother has already said, we're far better than we deserve. We thank you for it, Lord. Pray this morning, Father, you have your way in all these needs, Lord, and our church has needs. We pray you to meet our needs, Lord, bless our people, and give us a greater unity, Lord, to come together, Lord, in Jesus' name, to worship you and to do so the true home spirit. There's so many people say, Lord, this hymn's Lord, may you touch them and bless them and help them, Lord, only as our able to do for uh, the young man who's been wise, because of prayer for hate, Lord, that you bless him, Lord, and, and reach down to spare his life, Lord, and help him if it's possible, Lord, to be thy will, and, and bless him, Lord. We pray for uh, David Hopkins that you would be with him and bless him, Lord. We pray for a uh, murder on God, Lord, that you would be with them and bless them and help them. And we just pray, Lord, that you would take charge in his service. You'd help us uh, to turn our hearts and minds over to you, allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. And may you bless and anoint your people with testimonies of your truth and of your mercy and grace. And may you bless our singers, Lord, uh, to sing not unto the people, Lord, but to sing as unto the Lord this morning. Uh, bless their voices and bless uh, the words of these songs. They might touch our hearts and prepare us to hear your word. And help me, Father, we pray for our Brother Mike as he stands this morning, Lord. We thank you for men of God across this nation, Lord. And that would stand for the truth, Lord, and stand as a vessel be used by you. And may you bless our brother and use him, Lord, and, and give him the holy anointing and very words, Lord, and that our hearts most need to hear. And Lord, may we all move up closer, Lord, as you desire us to do. And Jesus, should there be anybody amongst us this morning, Lord, that doesn't know you as their Savior, isn't sure about their salvation, May you touch their hearts and help them to see it's purely out of love you desire them to come. And may they respond to you this day, we pray, Lord. Wherever every request that was made with a raised hand, Lord, you know the need and help us as you are able. Help us to keep our faith, our trust, our hope in you, Lord. And bless our church, Jesus. Help it to grow and get that kind of speech. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Does anyone have a word of testimony for our first song this morning? Can you play it on? Go ahead, Mr. Brown. I thank God for all that he's doing for my family. And uh, going through this thing with Hayden and Ron's testimony the other night, or day rather. And I thought if the Lord only had Jesus, he'd, he'd have somebody to hold on to. Yes, yes. But I do thank God for all that he's done for me and my children. And I know better things are coming. Yes, God bless you, Mr. Brown. Isn't it good to be in God's house this morning? Yeah. I can tell you. Yeah. I woke up this morning, I debated about whether or not to take a shower, because I took one last night. I didn't debate for one minute about where I was going to go this morning. This is where I wanted to be. This is where I needed to be. Friends, there's something I get right here, being in God's presence with His people, that I can buy, borrow, or find anywhere else, except for right here in God's yeah. house with His people. And thank God for the help and the strength to be here this morning. Thank God. Anyone else with something to share? Well, I did want to say that I talked to Viola yesterday and that she was going to the doctor today, which is a Sunday, and I, that's unusual. I didn't go much further with her, so with that, but we, um, we need prayer for her. 
Uh, one thing I found out, they did my surgery on Saturday and do them Sunday. A lot of the hospitals it may or may not mean anything to her, but they're trying real hard to catch up. They've lost a lot of revenue. They've got a lot of cases back so that could be we'll pray for it. Brother David, could you sing Give Me Jesus?
to be here. Amen. God is so, so good. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Now, on a lighter note, I did notice that Pastor Joe did remember his belt today. So, here I am. <laughs> I remember my belt. In case you're worried, I did shower this morning. <laughs>
Bible says, I, man, once I got you in the grips of my palm, you're never going to get But Jesus said, we can go free. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that. Yeah. And uh, boy, there's nothing like the spiritual liberty we find in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Anyone else got something you want to share for Brother Mike comes? Okay, Brother Mike comes. We've been praying for it, Brother. Look for it.
boom, you know, we're in it, and boom, we're out of it. But this thing hung out to them for a while. It was there for a while. And no doubt that they were, you know, in, in that time that they were in that storm, the Bible calls it a rock down. I mean, it was a, it was a messed up situation. No, no doubt that when they were going through that, they thought, many of them thought, this is it. This is it. They probably thought they were living in them end times, you know, just like some of us today. We're thinking, boy, this is the end time right here. You know, I don't see how it can get any better. Can't, you know, it can't get no worse than what it is. And, and things are looking really grim. And, and the, you know, the, they just hung on. And sometimes that's all we do. Amen. That's, that's right. right. That's right. That's right. And I think about where Paul was there. And Paul, you know, all this going on. And Paul didn't have a whole lot to say until he went down and disappeared for a little while. And sometimes that's what we got to do. We've got to get along with God. You know, right. with God. And then he come back up and said, i got some good news for you, folks. This ain't it. We're going to make it. Amen. Church, we're going to make it. Amen. Amen. We're going to make it through this, all right? And they, anyways, they, they, God delivered them. And they ended up on this island. And, and you know that you know the, the, how the, the, the scripture tells us, you know, I mean, the, the, theme, the, the main theme of this thing is how that Paul has been. You know, I want to educate you a little bit on snakes. You know, I was kind of looking up some statistics. And they, they say there's about 8,000 people that get, that get snake bit and die. That's in the, you know, or, or not all of them die, but get snake bit. That's just in the United States. 8,000 people, that's a lot of snake bites. Amen. And, uh, uh, if you refer to the Red Cross, the Red Cross has a five-step instructions on, on how to teach people not to get snake bit. So I'm going to share them before we get too far into God's work. Step number one, leave the snakes alone. Leave them alone. Don't, uh, step number two is don't go into tall grass. Don't turn on the rocks. You know, we ought not be playing when snakes hang out, you know. Amen. Surely we should. Amen. Step number three says keep your hands and your feet out of places you can't see. We sometimes tend to get into stuff that we don't, you know, we don't know what we're really getting into. Amen. You should be sticking That's your true. hands. And so the Bible says, you know, that we should be cautious and be careful and, and in all things with prayer and supplication, you know, uh, and praying that, that we don't fall into temptation. Um, and uh, I think that was number four there. And uh, five is a snake can never be a pet. Never can be a pet. You can't, you know, some, you know the Bible says, it, or not the Bible says, it. an old saying is if you play with fire, what's going to happen? You play with fire, you get burned. Out of that 8,000, a lot of them were, had snakes as pets. And they, they got big. You can't, make a, you can't make a friend with a snake. It just don't happen. I haven't said that I'm going to get into it. I hope that helps you. Um, there they were on this island, and, you know, having coming out of a storm and, and being in the trouble that they've been in for so long, and yet God has seen them safely ashore. But you know what? When God brings this out sometimes, there's evidence that we've been through something. You know that? Amen. 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 Yeah. They came out of a storm, they were tired. Amen. They were just human beings. They were tired. They were wet. They were cold. You know, uh, they went without food for a while. They were hungry. And uh, sometimes when we go through stuff, there's evidence that we've been through stuff. We don't like to let anybody know that we've gone through stuff, but sometimes it shows on us. Yes. And there were people on the island that saw that they'd been through some stuff. And then, you know, they showed them some kindness. You know, and the Bible said it wasn't no little kindness. It was a great kindness. They really, they went out of their way to, let's make a fire, you know, and, and warm these guys up and, and treat them with respect and kindness. You know, we've gotten into a place in the world today that we are not kind to one another anymore, amen? amen. We're afraid to open our, we won't hardly open the door open for somebody, for them to, <clears throat> to come in or out. We don't say please, we don't say thank you, we don't even talk to people anymore. We're just kind of loners, we keep to ourselves, and we just go about our business, and we see something going on, we'll just walk on past it. Somebody broke down on the side of the road, we just keep on driving. And there, I know that there's, there's those out there that are lying in wait, trying to catch people off guard and take advantage of them. But bless your heart, when God lays it on your heart to show somebody some kindness, Praise God, we ought to show somebody some kindness. Amen. We are God's people. You know, we'll win a lot of people over. 
by them showing them some love or some showing them some kindness. You know, I heard it said in the church before that you can't use hot dogs and hamburgers to get people into church. It's not the hot dogs or hamburgers that we're trying to dish out, but it's a little bit of kindness, a little bit of love that we're trying to show somebody. A little bit of fellowship to draw them in, to show them what kind of people we are. Amen. You ought to show that we're a Christian. You ought to be showing people that you're a Christian today by the way that you conduct yourself and how you act. And there they was, you know, that they had started a fire and everything. The Bible talks about how that they were warming them. They were warming themselves by the fire there. And, and it goes on to talk about how that Paul ran all of a bundle of sticks. Amen. There's every one of us today that's got something to contribute to the fire. Amen. Amen. There's every one of us that's got something that we can put into the fire. Amen. I'm going to tell you a good church service. It's not just when one where that one person gets excited. It's one where everybody gets excited. Amen. 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 When the preacher begins to preach, and somebody else throws a stick on the fire, and somebody else throws a stick on the fire, and the fire begins to grow. Amen. When somebody shouts, or somebody says amen, or somebody gets up and testifies, or sings, and that fire begins to grow in the church. Amen. Those are the good sources. When everybody puts towards the effort to keep that fire going. Amen. Let's keep the fire going in our church. Amen. There's a lot of folks today that go into churches and it's dead quiet. It's mousy quiet. And you got out of place. If you were to holler, amen, you're out of place. Amen. I've been in a church like that. I know. I was in the church and I took it. Got up the front row, not because I'm somebody special, but I like to get close to the fire. I like to get up there where I can feel a little bit better, like I'm close to the God. Not that these seats are any better than those seats, but it's just how I feel. And I got up the front row, and the preacher got up there, and he began to speak, and I hollered, Amen. And you could have heard a pin drop in that church. Amen. You could have been kept mousy quiet. I mean, even the preacher stopped talking. And there was a bunch of folks, not the only ones that I could see that were looking at me, but you could feel their eyes just born in the back of my ball head. Amen. And you know what I did? Oh, amen. I figured they needed to. Amen. Amen. Don't be ashamed or backwards about serving God. Amen. Amen. And you know, I, I've been in churches that were quiet like that. And I wonder why in the world, God, would you bring me here? And if it ain't for nothing else, it's just to stir up somebody else to get them and get them warmed up and get their spirit stirring in them. Amen. Amen. Sometimes that's all it takes is you to give your testimony and it'll set a fire in the church house. Amen. 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 I'd like to see a lot of churches get on fire. Amen. In a good way. Amen. And Paul, the Bible says that he grabbed his bundle of sticks. And he's going to put his in there in the fire. And the Bible talks about how this viper jumped out on him and latched onto his hand. Amen. It got a hold of him. It, it, let me see where here it is. <clears throat> it fastened on his hand. Amen. Fasten. I want to make sure I get that, that wording right. The Bible says that it fasted on his head. I said like, but it fasted on his head. It got a hold of him and it hung on. Amen. Amen. If you give the devil a chance to get a hold of you, not only will he get a hold of you, but he'll hang on. Amen. He'll get a hold of you and he'll hang on for dear life and you've got something stuck on you. Amen. I want you to know something. There's some of you in the church house today and if you get offended, you take it up with God. But there's some of you today that got something stuck on you. Amen. Amen. There's some of you that come into churches with vipers on your head. Amen. You wonder what? You know, if you got a viper on your head, you know what Paul did with his viper. But I know what some of God's people do with their vipers. It fastens on them and they leave it there. Amen. They'll carry a grudge with them for years. Amen. They'll have hurt feelings and they'll carry that for years. And there's some folks today that will dress up their viper to, to make it match the outfit to wear and come into church with pride. Have you seen my viper? Amen. They come in there showing off how they got a viper. Hey, you think you got vipers? Look at my viper. Amen. Look at the size of this booger. I've had to deal with this viper for years. And you know why I'm wondering? Why? Why are you still dealing with that? Why are you still carrying that around? Why have you still got that stuck on your head? Hey man, they carry it like a badge of honor with pride and everything else. Just look at my viper, amen. 
And it ought not be so. Amen. 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 Ought not be carrying up things in here. There's some folks that bring stuff in God's house that doesn't need to be in here. It needs to be shut off before they ever come through the Amen. doors. Amen. 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 Go on and let's get back to Paul here for a minute. This thing stuck on Paul's hand. It latched on there really good. And it wasn't going to come off of its own will, you know? Hey, man, it got on there, and it wasn't going to come off all by itself. It got fastened on there, and it had intentions of staying on there. Hey, man, with the devil, you give him a chance, he'll grab hold of you, and he'll hang on as long as you will let him. Hey, man, he's not, he's not about to let go or let you get loose because he's trying to do something. He's trying to stop you from doing the will of God. Hey, man, he's trying to stop your forward progress. He's trying to hinder your walk. And he's trying to interfere with your witness with other people. You know, people see a Christian today. He's got a fight around their head. Bless your heart. You may not see it, but they will. Hey, man, they'll see you. That, that look at Christians with a critical eye. And they'll be looking like, uh-huh, uh-huh, look at him. He thinks he's all that. I see that viper you're dealing with. Hey, man, Paul got this viper, and it's hanging on there, and it's not coming off of its own will. Listen, you can't get a viper off all by yourself. Hey, man. Amen. Something had to move Paul to get the viper off. Amen. Amen. But before I listen to me, the Bible says that he shook it. Amen. There's something inside of us that when Satan gets hold of us, that God gives us the power to shake it off. Amen. Amen. There's some people that don't have the power over sin. Amen. They don't have power over temptation. They just fall right into it. It comes naturally because they don't know God. But when a child of God gets bit by the devil, he can shake it off because he's got power over the enemy. Listen, that snake is not on the same level as you are today. If you're a child of God, God has put him under your feet and you can shake him off. Amen. But you've got to be a child of God. Amen. And then there were those that stood around and they looked at him. They latched, they took and they fastened his eyes on him. They said, folks, look at you till they preach and say, I just think he's going to die. Amen. Some of them wish you'd die. Amen. Amen. I think the devil thought he had me rejoice that day. Hey, we got him. He, his heart ain't beating anymore. He's dead. He's clinically dead. Amen. We got him. Boy, it must have made him mad when you came back. Amen. 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 Look at it. They expect him to the, the devil is looking to kill the church. Amen. Amen. If he can't kill the church, he'll kill the preacher. Amen. If he can stop the preacher from preaching, he can affect the whole church. Amen. But it's not just about the preacher. If he can get you to shut up and not testify about what God's doing in your life, he can work on evil through you. Amen. If he can get you to clap on of a back of a pew and hang on to that and not hang on to God, he's got you where he wants you. Amen. He'll try and keep you where you're ineffective as long as he possibly can. Amen. And Paul shook it off. Amen. And they watched him and said, well, surely this man's going to die. That's what they were expecting. Do you know when something bad happens to you, the world looks at you, and they're watching to see what happens. Amen. Hey, man, you let a child of God, something happen in your life, a loved one pass, sickness come, some tragedy to show up, or some, your children get into something they ought not to be. And everybody back, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they take a thing and they start watching. Yeah. All right, Mr. Goody Two Shoes. Let's see what you're going to do now. Hey, man. Hey, man, when that, when it hits home, man. Yeah. He's all that during the week, and he's been all that for a while, but, but he's never had to deal with a wayward child. He's never had to deal with sickness. Hey, Amen. He's never had a problem in his life. Let's see what he does now, huh? How good are you? How close of a walk you got with God now, huh? How are you going to survive? Let's see what happens. They're watching you. They're watching you. See how that you're going to handle it. Hey, Amen. Because if they see you stumble and fall, they're going to say, yeah, I knew it wasn't nothing at all time. Hey, Amen. I knew there wasn't nothing to that. If they'd have been something to it, he would have handled it better. And they were watching him and expecting him to die. Hey, Amen. When tragedy comes our way, people watching us, expecting us to just fall over and give up. Hey, Amen. We ain't giving up. I don't know about you, but I'm not giving up. Amen. 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 Y'all listen. Paul had this assurance. Paul had already come through some stuff. Anybody in the church ever been through some stuff? I know 
know I have, and I know a lot of you I've gotten to know pretty good over the last few years, but I know it's been through some stuff. Amen. And you're still here. Amen. God brought you here. Amen. You've been through the storm. You've been through a shipwreck. Amen. You suffered great losses in the past. And God has still brought you here. And we have this assurance too. Paul, Paul was told, he said, you must go to Rome. Amen. If God tells you you're going to Rome, bless your heart, you're going to Rome. And as long as he had that reassurance that God was sending him somewhere, he knew that it would be all right no matter what. Amen. Listen, God has assured us that he would go with us every step of the way. That he'd not leave us, he'd not forsake us, but he'd go with us even to the end of the world. Amen. Yeah. If you've got that assurance, then there's nothing to worry about. Amen. Right. Amen. Whatever happens, happens, but God's going to go be with us. We're going to make it. Right. Amen. I tell people I don't worry about the church, not at all. Amen. They talk, they talk about how the church numbers get down or how the church is having kind of cancel services. I don't worry about the church. You know why? Because Jesus Christ is coming back to the church. Amen. It's going to be here. I don't care what the government does. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what the devil does. The church is going to be here because Jesus Christ is coming back for the church. Amen. 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 Chuck it off in the fire. And they watched them to see what would happen. And they watched them for a while. Amen. Amen. They didn't just watch them on Sunday to see how he reacted on Sunday. Because they didn't know how to do Sunday. Amen. And some of us even hang on for a couple Sundays. But they watched them for a while. The Bible said they watched them for a good little while, a long time. To see what was going to happen. And then they were convinced. Amen. They changed their mind. Oh, I just about shouted when I read that. God says, we need to stop right there for a minute. We got to get it. changed their minds. Amen. Amen. You know what I'm doing here preaching today? You know what my purpose in life is today? No matter what I face in life, no matter what I go through in life, no matter how much adversity I face, no matter how many trials that I have to go through, no matter how many snares the devil sets for me, I'm here today to try to change your mind. Amen. I'm trying today to get lost people to change their mind, to realize that they need Jesus in their life. I'm trying to change the mind of those that are discouraged and encourage them that we can go another mile. I'm here to change people's minds. Amen. Amen. That's all I can do. That's all God called us to do. To change their mind. Because if you get them to change their mind, get them pointed in the right direction, God will do the rest. Right. Amen. I ain't saved nobody. I expected to save nobody. Paul didn't save nobody. But we can change the minds of people Amen. and get them pointed in the right direction. Amen. Amen. Get the, they changed their mind. Listen, they got a little confused because they thought, well, maybe he's not a murderer or anything. But maybe he's a God. Amen. We're not gods. We're not gods. We don't save nobody. Amen. We can change your mind. And we can point them to the God. The way. The truth. And the life. Amen. Amen. We can point them in the right direction. And that's what it's all about. Amen. It's to point them in the right direction. Amen. When they saw no harm came to them, they changed their mind. Amen. Listen. No, the devil can't do anything against us unless God allows it. And if God allows it, God will still see us through it. Amen. 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 Hey, we may have to go through some trials. We may have to go through some storms. But bless your heart, Jesus is with us every step of the way. Amen. 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 And he won't no harm to come to us that God ain't going to take care of us. Amen. Amen. You know, I'm looking forward to getting rid of this mask. Put them on the crown. Amen. 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 And then I'm going to take my crown off and throw it down at his feet. Amen. Because he's worthy. And I'm going to praise him for an eternity because I get to say, thank God that he changed my mind. Amen. 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 Now let's get a song stand your feet. It's time for us. <clears throat>
Maybe you got one of those secret addictions that you don't want to talk about. You'd be embarrassed for the church to know about it if people really knew how you were. But I'm praying God will change your mind. Yes. You might be here today and thinking, well, you know what? I've got a lot of time in my life. I, I, I can get things right some other time. I'm praying God will change your mind. Amen. Because you don't have a promise of tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. Amen. None of us have a promise of tomorrow. I'm praying God will change your mind. I'm praying that he'll for you that are here that you're struggling, that you gave up. You've lost hope. You can't see your way out. You just don't know how far you can go on any further. Oh, preacher, you don't know what. I've prayed so hard. I've tried. I've tried to live right and do right. And you know, I'm just struggling. In it. And I don't know if I can make it. And I'm praying this morning that God will change your mind. Amen. Because if God can change your mind, God can take weeping and turn it into joy. He can turn defeat and turn it into victory. He can lift you up from the fiery clay and put your feet on a solid rock. He can still do that today. Amen. God can still help you today if you just come. As they say, if you're here today and you want to come and pray, I want to encourage you to come and pray. Page 375.